Welcome, welcome. This is episode two of Real Talk with Casey and Jojo. What's up, Casey? So So today we're going to talk about being in the now, in the present moment versus in the past or in the future. And I think we came up with this because of an experience, an example that we had uh, of you being in the in not in the moment and thinking of the future and it happened a couple times right on the way to the court not court but to um downtown and then when you were throwing away the stuff in the dumpster remember can you explain what happened so we can all get a feel of the same what's going on yeah so this past weekend as you know it was labor day weekend so business some businesses were closed some weren't <clears throat> but anyway we drove we were driving past a u-haul place and we had some stuff to get rid of out of the house to take the dump that you know we've sort of been slacking on so i'm like we're gonna go by, we'll go by the u-haul place and we'll rent the truck i didn't even think about whether or not you know the dumpster wake county facilities were open right so anyway it worked smooth you know we we got that they had a truck available a van or whatever we pulled out went home loaded it up and we're driving there and i you know I pick up my phone to check and see if the dump is actually open and of course it's closed I start not freaking out, but, you know, getting frustrated a little bit um, because we have this van packed full of all this stuff. And Joanna's like, don't worry about it. Just drive by there and see if it's open. I'm like, but it says it's closed. (laughs) I wasn't thinking it was. And so then, you know, I'm going through all the motions, like, where can we put it? You know, Joanna's like, just stop behind the Bojangles and throw it in there. Dump. I'm like, no, no, we can't. (laughs) I just said find a dumpster. We can't do that. So anyway, so I come up with like a couple alternative locations and, you know, we pull into the the dump and of course it's open. Of course. And, you know, she's over there just. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like you wasted all this time yeah. and energy focusing on and being upset instead of being in the moment, enjoying our ride, or enjoying the music, um, just enjoying ourselves. And instead he was frustrated. So it was kind of like, oh, you see, you could have enjoyed your time, but instead you filled it with all of this worry, with anxiety, with things we normally um, think of. So when you think about the past, it's mostly related to depression. Like you you were depressed because you're stuck in the past. If you're thinking too much about the future and worrying about the what ifs, then you, it causes anxiety. So we have a society right now, which is full of depression, full of anxiety, and not really being in the present moment, enjoying it. Because think about it, if we are, for example, when we were going downtown, right? You were just oh, thinking about them, the future. Tell them why, just give them a quick synopsis. Um, so go I, ahead. Had, I had ordered a permit, a uh, gun permit and went, needed to go pick it up. So we had all been slacking on that. Um, so finally it's like, yeah, let's go get it. So no. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> I thought you were gonna say more than that. Okay, so uh, we go to get it. And the entire time that we are headed that way, I feel like he's in a hurry, in a rush. I have, I have things to do. I have things to do. And the whole time. So we get there. And during the process, it's like that feeling of hurry up. I got things to do. Uh, long story short, uh, they, they, he, they said it expired and he had to redo it. So he left pretty upset because you didn't get what you came there for. Well, clarify the government being the government the sheriff's office where you pick up the permit sent an email that said do not come by here call us and make an appointment so i've been calling for weeks and nobody answers the phone they don't allow you to leave a message not that they would call you back if you could so i was doing what the email told so what i was told through the email so we get there and she's like oh yeah it expires after 28 28 days i'm like "Ah, hold up (laughs) and so you know i Got upset. Got a little tooed. Yes. And then drove home. That was nice, but I got a little tooed. Drove home a little bit um, frustrated. I was going to say pissy, and then I changed it. Um, frustrated and and missing out again on the experience of we're driving, we can listen to music, we could talk, we can enjoy our, our time together because we don't really have that much time together. And instead, he's pissy. He's upset. He's driving crazy um, to match the mood. And you we get home and then you're you're playing video games and i'm thinking what was all that about what was the rush for what was what was all that time wasted on the future on the what ifs on the i have things to do in the future versus all that time that could have been spent in the now in the moment and we could have enjoyed it because we we've 
have memories based on moments that are really spent from the time that you're in that now. Like that's how we have memories. We're in the now and that creates a memory. Yeah, and to, um, if, this, if you've never heard this before or thought about it within your own sort of thought process and ego, you know, memories are nothing but, you know, what you remember it, but what a phenomenon happens, you know, as the memory ages, it tends to change in your mind, right? So you you tend to either over-dramatize it as in it was really good or, <laughs> uh, or under-dramatize it and it was really bad, right? Or I guess that's over-dramatize it both ways. But the point is, is that, you know, when, when you're thinking, when you're not in the now, whether it's the past or present, but specifically the past, you know, it's a construct, right? I mean, it, it, it really takes on a life of its own, especially as that ages. Now, kind of transition into a little bit of a relationship conversation, right? So Joanna described a whole experience where I got pissy twice. Um, you know, she understands these things. She's a strong, you know, smart, intelligent woman. So she can sort of be my um, pillar, if you will, mm -hmm. right? Like hold me up and kind of get me back on track. But, you know, imagine if you're in a relationship like we were, mm -hmm. you know, five, 10 years ago, um, you know, imagine now if she doesn't understand that, right? And she sees how I react. And then you sort of got this tennis match where you're batting a ball back and forth. Yeah. You know, it's exhausting. And, and I think for couples, um, the longer you're in a relationship and the longer that sort of tennis ball effect lasts, um, that's where you have the couple that goes, I don't even know who we are anymore. We don't even enjoy each other anymore. And it's it's because you're not in the now, right? It's because you're, you're, you're focused on the past or, or, or what's going to happen. But it's hard to enjoy each other, you know, when you're playing that, that ego match. match. The it's ego the ego match. match. Yeah, yeah, because like my ego will react and and take it personal if he's being some type of way going. Why isn't he being in the present? Like, why? Why isn't he the other day? You know, we kissed goodbye or whatever it was. And I, I was like, that was fast. And and he's like, sorry, I had all this stuff in my mind and I had things that I wanted to do. So I had already had that going in my mind. And meanwhile, it's making me feel like, do you, do you not want to kiss me? Are you, what's going on? You know? And he's like, no, it's not that at all. And that's when I pulled him back and said, look, be in the now. Like if you're going to, if you're going to say goodbye to your husband or your wife, you know, take those 10 seconds or one minute. And, and when you embrace, I mean, I know I don't want to go into like the morbid side of that could be the last time you see them, but truly that's how it can go down. I mean, that could be the last time you see them. And, and then to me, it kind of helps to reset my mood to let me just have this moment because you never know. Right. Yeah. And she's giving many examples of me. So clearly I struggle with this more than she does, but it, it I live in the moment. I think guys, yeah, I think guys, um, uh, let me not say that, I, but I, I think I the think, fact that you're a Virgo, which yeah, is very yeah. analytical, the fact that you like are, yeah, like so up. it's very left brain and anybody who's very left brain, um, has that think, 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 think you add that to the fact that everybody right now is not taking that time to be still. And I'm not saying everybody, but, um, we really are turning things and people are taking more time to, for themselves. But the fact that we haven't been for such a long time, it has shut down our creativity. It has shut down our individuality. It has shut down, um, you know, that space where, where we create new things. We've been on this just like hamster wheel on this patterns and analytical and let me think, think, think. And it's sometimes you just have to stop thinking and be, <laughs> and it's hard for you, right? Yeah, it's, it's super hard. Cause I mean, there's, with everything we have going on and then me specifically, um, there's always something to do, you know, and, and the fact that I, growing up, you know, I, I really leaned on my strength, which was planning, thinking, you know, kind of solving. And now that um, I'm trying to become woke <laughs> and enlightened, it's like, no, no, forget that. Like, that's not Look, this is an example right now. He goes, do you have anything planned for what we're going to do for the podcast? And I was like, no. We'll just talk about it, whatever. And, and he's like, I mean, you don't have this written down. You don't have a plan. You don't have details. Right, you don't have right. the, you know, dot the I's and yeah, cross but, the T's. Like, it, no. Yeah, and if there's any other, you know, going back to relationships, if there's any couples out there that are like us, I mean, I'm the thinker. She's the sort of intuitive, gets the message person. Um, you know, we've, we've been together 24, 23 years, 24 years. And we had this conversation, what, a month ago, two weeks ago, I don't know, recently, after all <laughs> these years. And it's like, okay, 
because what happens is, is like, she gets the intuition to do something. And I'm oh, like, yeah, I'm yeah, like yeah. nah, that's, that's a, I don't know about and that. And it comes suddenly, and, like, and so really then, fast. You know, being the awesome person that she is, she, she most of the time defers to me. Right. And then, of course, I end up being wrong. She ends up being right. And she smiles and eh, she doesn't listen. She doesn't say that. But, you know, that's that's the message I get. But the point is, is that we we went through the whole thing and we're like, yeah, I need to listen to your intuition more. But at the same time, you know, I need to be able to interject my strengths yep. when needed. So the whole timing aspect of that and the ebb and flow and, and the sort of dancing is is what I, I like to call it. Um, needs to occur but you know you have to be in the now and you have to be aware and you have to be present yeah because we, to keep that cause we both were, were like how are we going to know when it's your intuition or when it's you thinking about it and I'm like well when mm -hmm. it's my intuition what's the word that it's I use immediate like she said there's no hesitation no hesitation right? yes so if there's no hesitation and I'm like we're getting it at the one downtown there's a reason why, and and I don't know why. I mean, I call it clear cognizance, which is when you know things, but you don't know why you know them. And that's what I do. <laughs> My daughter says it's creepy, but it's like, yeah. I just know things. And so when it's no hesitation, that's your cue right there. Like, just listen, because I'm going with the flow. Yeah, don't second guess it. Because what's the worst that can happen? You or, or you could just be it. wrong. And then, I mean, I enjoy that too. So, <laughs> yeah. And, and so, the what it came down to was, yeah, if it's, if it, we had this conversation, went through it, and our kids were interjecting and kind of get into it with us as well. Um, but what it ended up, what ended up happening was whenever it's instantaneous, it's, you know, and she, you can tell, like when she's, when she's confident about it, it just goes, mom, let's do this. When it's not, it's like, it, I'm like, a little mm, bit of what about if we right. did this? So, that's where when, <laughs> When she gets an idea and I know that it's quick, I need to back off, right? I just need to keep my mouth shut, just like she did with me with the whole gun permit um, trash situation. She needs to just sit back and allow it to unfold. In the back of my mind, I can have a plan should it not work out and then just go with the flow. Now, if, if her intuition was wrong, I can step in, you know, we're dancing, problem solved, let's keep it moving. Because there's always that factor of lessons, you know, like he has to learn his own lesson. Me telling him isn't going to make him all of a sudden, you know, understand as much as when it actually happens. And then an example comes and another example comes and it's like right in your face going, do you see it now? Do you get it? Yeah. And, and two, um, I mean, just kind of going through this situation. I mean, imagine again, you're, you're back with the tennis match. You know, you're going back and forth with the ego with your wife. Imagine a situation then where, you know, your wife says, let's do this. And, you know, and you're like, no, 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 we ain't doing that. And you come up with all these reasons why. Now you're arguing, right? I mean, you, all this baggage is, is sort of playing its role or taking its toll on your relationship through a simple act of what should we do? Which way should we go? Should we go left or should we go right? So, you know, again, the, the now doesn't just apply to oneself. It, I think it also has a huge impact in, in your relationships and communication with other people, right? listening right i was gonna say because if you're in the moment if you're in the now you're listening to every single word that that the person is saying you're looking at the tone or or hearing body the tone language. um but you're looking at their body language yeah you're looking at the entire situation uh from a bird's eye view you're just observing and when you do that you collect so much more information than just rah, 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 rah. and then you're like oh yeah okay so like yeah. you miss out on the entire communication like it ruins it energetically like it's not connecting yeah and i think i think too there's a there's an unspoken respect um that that happens when individuals communicate and, and you know when somebody's ready to kind of tell you you're wrong and doesn't really want to hear you out you know you know that as an individual when you're speaking to that person um so i mean I, again i think it i think it helps strengthen communication skills and it also increases the level of respect with the person you're having that conversation with because they know that you're you're trying to understand their point of view but mm -hmm. it but it requires you to be in the now and to be present right and not be stuck in your left side like i am so what can we do to help people um be in the now yeah um, so I, I struggle and I've always struggled with meditation and this may not work for everyone, but it, it, it's really been helpful for me. Guided meditations is what kind of what I started with. And, um, you know, they, they were okay for me, but they, they didn't really work because I needed to get to a place where I can gain control over my mind, right? I needed to be in a state of awareness. Um, and when we say state of awareness, uh, that means 
like being able to look above the situation, if that makes sense, yeah. and please jump <laughs> being to look above the situation to where you can analyze it from both sides and you're not directly like a tether, an emotional tether tied to one side. Right. Right. So you can be analytical. Neutral. Right. You can thank you. <laughs> you can be neutral to the situation. Um, right. So, you know, being able to be neutral is key. Please help me. I lost track. <laughs> you're doing that again. Okay. <laughs> it's going to be a thing. Um, this is, it's neutral to look at it when you're in meditation. Meditation. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, the, you know, going back to it, the, for me, um, if you've ever seen the movie um, Legoland, I think it was Legos, but the Lego movie where the guy has a double decker couch in his brain and nothing but white space. So I like to meditate uh, quietly and I try to essentially just focus on, if you shut your eyes, you can kind of see white light come through your eyelids and essentially, you know, like the Bible said, take no thought. Right. So I try to hold that place of no thought for as long as I can. Sometimes it's 10 seconds. Sometimes it's three. Sometimes it's minutes. But for me, as I did that and as I practiced that more and more and more, I was able to hold no thought longer and longer and longer and longer. So how did that translate over into, you know, my my being present is that when my brain starts wanting to fast forward, to plan, to think about all the things that I have mm -hmm. to do to not be in the now, I'm more in control of my mind and my mind is in control. It's like a muscle. You're you're yes. basically you're training it. training the muscle to have control mm -hmm. of being in the present of basically if you think of energy and you think of thoughts um of energy going out, you'll have all this tangled up thoughts just going everywhere. So if you can just think about bringing them back and just being centered in the present moment with all these thoughts just you know, bringing them back to yourself and like, what's going on right now? What can I become aware of in this present moment? Then you've basically come to a point where you've strengthened that muscle enough that you can translate that from meditation into this reality, into this realm. And, and that's really what it takes for you to be able to receive information from the higher world, the cosmic, I mean, cosmic, um, the universe from God. And you're able to receive that. That's why I flow with my intuition. That's why when I, you know, I'm so still sometimes I'm so quiet that I, I get tons of messages and I'm sitting there laughing at myself. And he's like, why are you laughing? I'm like, Oh, you know, my brain, I'm just thinking back and forth. Um, but sometimes, you know, you get downloads and that's what leads you towards these shortcuts that ultimately lead you to alignment. Yeah, so I think meditation is a thousand percent key for an individual. Um, I mean, couples, you can meditate together as well. I think that's super helpful, but sort of from a couple's perspective, um, you know, if you get into a, a, an argument with your husband, wife, child, whatever, um, a lot of times, you know, your ego is in control of everything. You know, you're, you're, you're probably not even thinking it's subconscious on a lot of levels. You're, you're just, you know, and nobody wants to step down. Nobody wants to step aside. Right. So, you know, taking a second and breathing. So if you, if Joanne and I get into a fight, for example, and, um, you know, I'm hot, she's hot, whatever, you know, let, let's take a second and it's difficult. Let's hold hands. Let's look into each, other's, into each other's eyes and breathe, right. Take big three long, deep breaths. Now that's hard as hell, mm -hmm. right. It's hard as hell. But something happens when you do that as a couple because it requires you both to surrender, surrender mm -hmm. to each, and you're surrendering to each other because you're trusting that that person's not going to, you know, they're going to basically follow you lockstep back to the dancing. And when you breathe three times and, and you open your eyes or, or you focus on one another, it's amazing how it shifts, right? But the hardest part is just doing it. You know what I mean? And, and looking into that person, because that's the last damn thing you want to do when you're trying to be right, right? Right. But you have to understand it was the egos that were fighting. Right. The spiritual side, our soul to soul knows what's up. That's the one that's connecting. It's like, look, we are, the soul is bigger than the ego. The soul knows what's up. We can have control by stepping you know, going from our animal nature, our cardinal mind, and, and going to our higher selves, we can do that, we have that control. So it's like, okay, we're going to step into our soul. Now we're going to communicate as soul to soul. And that way, it overcomes the ego, it, it just diminishes it. it's it's gone, you can't, it's like smiling, you, you know, you've done that before where they tell you to smile at the person next to you and continue to smile and and it's very uncomfortable and you're staring at each other smiling and it's like okay and then it really makes you smile because it 
it just does that just like greeting yeah. somebody and it smiling and they smile back it's a thing you know yeah so the the breathing you know it strengthens that surrender muscle um because the last thing your ego wants to do is surrender it, it wants yeah. to be right it wants to, it be wants fed. to fight but you know it, it's it's like a it's like a child in a lot of ways once you suit once you soothe it and once you quiet it down it'll go right to sleep and, mm -hmm. and you can get back to having a you know a real conversation um i know for me like one of the things that i I say enjoy kind of, I mean that in a, in a kind of a weird way. Mm, sadistic way? Yeah, sadistic, yeah. thank you. But watching other people fight, when you start to kind of understand and the surrender and you start kind of at, uh, putting these things into practice, it's hilarious, man. Because when you see someone fight, you're like, what? Like, really? Like We did you got, that? You got mad over that? <laughs> yeah. Like, they didn't even mean nothing by that, man. And we've all been there, right? Yeah. We've all seen fights. We've all been in the situation where we were acting like assholes and we realized all the things we shouldn't have said. Yeah. But, you know, meditation, the, the breathing, looking into each other's eyes, closing your eyes, whatever, the deep breaths, super awesome tools to kind of help you strengthen And just muscles. keep remembering to be in the moment because each moment creates memories. So what memories do you want to have? You know, when you're, you're at your deathbed and you're looking back at your life, what memories do you want to have? Because you can create them. You can choose what moments you want to create. So I'm going to leave it at that because we have something else. Yeah. To do, and, but. and real quick, um, uh, this, uh, awesome book, it's the power of now shout out to Eckhart Tolle. I believe he's a QE follower. Yes. Uh, Eckhart Tolle. No, he's not. He's um, not. my bad. That was, um, Oh my God, I forgot. Don't Doesn't matter. Gary Zukov from Gary the Seed of the Soul. Yeah, sorry, Seed of the Soul. <laughs> my bad. My bad. You should follow us though, if you're listening, Mr. Tolk. Um, but anyway, <laughs> check this book out. Um, super awesome. If you're interested in it, The Power of the Now um, goes over a lot of things, a lot of the things Power that we're talking about. Now by Eckhart Tolle. Um, yeah, it's an amazing book. Check it out. It'll help you um, build that now muscle that yes. we all need. <laughs> yes. Awesome. So uh, we will be here next Thursday for episode three. Um, and yeah, hope you guys enjoyed it. Peace.